This is just a short uh, video on the refrigeration system and the refrigeration cycle um, diagram that's in your course material. Okay, let's talk about this diagram. We're going to start down here with the compressor. Okay, that's what we're going to worry about first is the compressor. Okay, and we're going to come down here. Our compressor, remember, is a vapor pump. Okay, it compresses high pressure vapor or low pressure vapor coming in on the suction line and discharges with high pressure vapor. Now, when we look at this, you're going to see that our discharge line comes out of our compressor and goes to the top of our condenser. Our discharge line contains high pressure, which is the HP, high temperature, superheated vapor. In other words, the vapor has included the superheat from the evaporator. That's the latent heat added after the change of state. It comes into the compressor. The refrigerant picks up additional heat content from the heat of compression. And that heat content is part of the refrigerant as it discharges in the discharge line. Then our refrigerant comes into the condenser. About halfway through our condenser, or start, or pretty much, yeah, I'd say about halfway, the refrigerant has cooled enough and starts the condensation process, changes from a vapor to a liquid. And by the time it comes to the bottom of the condenser, it is now a high pressure, high temperature, subcooled liquid. In other words, it has moved to a couple points under the heat of condensate or the condensing point. Then it discharges from the condenser into the liquid line. Okay, the liquid line moves the refrigerant to the metering device. The metering device takes that liquid refrigerant at high pressure and drops it to a low pressure. Okay, so again, we're going from a high pressure, high temperature, supercooled liquid or subcooled liquid to a low pressure, low temperature, saturated vapor, otherwise known as flash gas. The metering device then discharges the refrigerant into the evaporator. The evaporator absorbs heat from the surrounding space and boils that refrigerant off into a vapor. As it leaves the evaporator, it's a low pressure, low temperature, superheated vapor because again, it gains some sensible heat after the evaporation process is done and it moves into the suction line and returns to the compressor. Now, there's you'll see that there's a couple dotted lines across here, okay? We, we have our low side and our high side. There's two points of pressure change, the metering device and the compressor. Then we have vapor and liquid. So we come from our vapor to our liquid, okay? The evaporator and the condenser are the two points of state change. By state change, I mean conversion from a vapor to a liquid or from a liquid to a vapor. This is a continuing circle. Refrigerant is never used up, okay? It can leak out if the system has leaks, but it is never used up. It never has to be changed. And that's the refrigeration cycle. We start our compressor, high pressure, high temperature, superheated vapor, move to the condenser, condenser condenses the refrigerant, cools it, subcools it. Our liquid line now has high pressure, high temperature, subcooled liquid. We move to our metering device. Our metering device changes the pressure from a high pressure to a low pressure by almost like the finger over the end of the garden hose. We now have a low pressure, low temperature, saturated li vapor liquid mix known as flash gas, moves into our evaporator. We absorb heat, we boil, we start the boiling process. We boil off all the liquid. So by the time it gets to a suction line, it is a low pressure, low temperature, superheated vapor. And we come back to our compressor, which is cannot pump liquids can only pump vapors and the process starts all over again.